have the CEO of Archetype and uh, also AKA Value here, Nicholas Lyons. And uh, Nicholas has had a, an, an Archetype has had a vision of um, using technology like what Veris has created for quite some time and also has a very valuable portfolio uh, that, and it has uh, patents, broad patents that enable uh, very secure hardware wallet, hardware ID technologies. Um, it, it is as a recognized uh, value, I can say, I don't want to actually put numbers on it, but it's quite significant. And uh, and we have been discussing and, and archetype slash value is uh, working on mutualizing this patent portfolio through the launch of a currency that we expect to be launched on the various network when these technologies get to mainnet called value. And so what we're gonna do today, this is not a solicitation for investment. This is not a recommendation of investment. This is a technical discussion and a dry run uh, to go through this with uh, Archetype, with Nicholas. And because we're doing it on the Veris testnet, we thought that we would also record this auspicious moment and, and have an opportunity to, to show others what we're doing that makes this technology so unique and, and, and fit so well with the kind of use case that we're describing, which is really mutualizing uh, this patent portfolio and the technology and making it possible for all licensing of this patent portfolio in whatever tier, whether it's a small, um, inexpensive uh, hardware key that can be made in a consumer device, snapped out of plastic that um, Archetype has already shipped over 20 million of, uh, or if it's a uh, secure hardware key that leverages various ID and stores a key so privately that even the owner of the hardware wallet doesn't have access to it, but still makes it revocable and recoverable thanks to various ID technology. Um, whatever tier they decide to license, they would license by burning provably a certain amount of the value currency um, when this gets to mainnet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch the value test currency or a version of it in this dry run on testnet and anyone who is using the Veris wallet and you can see the on screen this is the actual uh, Veris desktop version 0.7.1-4 um, anyone who's using this in addition to the normal coins these are actually uh, mainnet coins of Zcash, Bitcoin and Komodo you can also connect the Veris testnet, which is all test coins, none of them have any actual value, whether they're referred to as USD or BTC or ETH or whatever they happen to be. When those tokens are live on the Veris mainnet, they may have a different name, um, even mapped to the same uh, currencies. So we're using them right now on testnet. And having said all of that, as an introduction, I, I want to introduce Nicholas Lyons, the CEO with the vision for the system that, that we are enabling in this community and that others surely will want to leverage. And Nick, I, I want to welcome you and been a part of the community for some time now after, after uh, learning about Varus and you've been contributing a lot in, uh, in many ways, uh, both in, in donating and contributing development resources and so i want to thank you for that and uh so are you ready to actually do a dry run of the value currency with all of the capabilities that we've been talking about i think uh first of all i wanted to say thank you very much to the whole community it's a pleasure to be a member of such a welcoming and friendly group of people i think mike's leadership is something that we can all be proud of i think the technology is historic in what it can achieve 
I've been in the financial markets for my whole career, and this is a major milestone. So I'm extremely proud that we will be able to mutualize and create something of great value that will be able to be shared by all the people that are members of this community and hopefully the wider world. So we're very proud to be members of the community and to reach this important moment. Thank you. Thank you for that eloquent and, and uh, incredible statement. We appreciate having you in the community. So, um, okay. So what I'm going to do first, I will hop over, let's get started and actually make this happen. Um, so I am going to just hop right over to the Veris ID mm -hmm. tab. Um, I'm looking at my Veris testnet and on Veris testnet, I've got a number of IDs, but as you can see, I have the ID value and value is not funded. So I am going to fund value as the first step because when I launch this currency, as we'll see, I'm going to initially contribute currencies in a number of the different reserves that the value currency will be convertible to, will hold in reserves. I'm gonna hop over to settings and do this quickly for two reasons. One, because it just is a faster way to move multiple currencies with one transaction. And, uh, and I'm just going to um, enter a command that I've already copied to make this easy. And I will describe it before I hit enter. It's basically a send currency command. I'm using the built-in command line in the Veris desktop wallet, which works for any of the native currencies supported by the wallet. Veris included, Komodo and asset chains included, Zcash included. Um, I'm sending currency from anywhere in my wallet to the value ID. And I'm sending four different types of currency in one transaction. First entry doesn't specify the type of currency, so it will default to Veris test. I'm going to send 11,000 Veris tests. Second is the USD token on the test net, and no monetary value in any of these. That is uh, also going to be 11,000. On the test net, we have uh, Veris test and the USD token have similar values are about equal depending on um, arbitrage opportunities right now. The, uh, I'm going to send uh, one Bitcoin token, which would on mainnet uh, using the decentralized bridge represent uh, one Bitcoin of value. I'm going to send um, ETH ETH to the value address. So I'm about ready to hit send. I'll go ahead and do that. I hit run, I get transaction ID back. And now that value ID is funded and I'm ready to launch the currency. Okay, so let's go through the parameters here and make sure that we're all on the same page, uh, what these mean, what they do. So the first is obviously the name, that's value. We funded the value ID. And so it's got all the funds it needs and the currencies we're going to talk about in a minute to launch this command. The options are flags and options that we add together. Um, and these particular options mean that this is a fractional currency that holds reserves, that it is a token, that it also can be used as a reserve for other currencies. The currencies that are in this reserve or that are in the reserves of this um, value currency, as we've discussed, Nick, are, uh, well, Veris test for the dry run, the test USD, and the test Bitcoin and ETH tokens. Initial contributions that we just funded the value ID to make, which will be pulled out of the value ID, are $10,000 of each of those currencies using um, our imaginary pricing of Veris test 
and the current market pricing of both uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum um, as examples. But now I want to get to interesting parameters on how this launch will really work. Does all that, uh, does all that make sense, uh, Nick, from your perspective? Those are the right currencies. Um, this is the right approach to launching. Does that make sense to you? Yep, we think that uh, it makes sense that you would want to be able to uh, pay for patents, uh, portfolios as commons in various, various tests in this case, Bitcoin, ETH, and uh, US dollars. And that uh, it is good that you can set a minimum in order to uh, guarantee a launch and the fact that those funds can be returned automatically to those if you do not make that target. So we think that's uh, excellent functionality. Right, sounds good. I didn't, uh, I didn't yet go into that feature. So let me real quickly tell everybody what you were referring to. So um, the, we're just about to talk about this min pre-conversion, which means that in all of the currencies, these are the amounts that if you do not have this much of a subscription in that currency, the currency will not launch and everyone will automatically get all of their contributions back in their original currencies. Um, less uh, transfer fee, which is a minimal, basically, network fee. So um, uh, we have a min pre-conversion that we set at $5 million, uh, and what that means is that the contribution or the, the participation in USD on the test net must be at least $5 million or this won't launch. And the interesting thing to note about that is that the pricing of this currency is dynamic throughout the launch. So um, if you have $5 million of participation and the currency that launches is completely uh, convertible between all currencies, then it's very likely that you're going to have arbitrage at least, but really people will just have a great deal by by putting in um, the other currencies to match that amount. So there's financial incentive to match that amount, which is why we really need only to specify one minimum on this multi-currency launch. So um, I, I did wanna mention the max as well, because we're going to do something on, uh, on this launch that's fair across all participants on the blockchain who participate in the pre-launch so there is no um, you know, special uh, connection that you need. You just need to participate in the pre-launch, but there's going to be a maximum. And, and once you reach that, no one's going to be able to get this, uh, this pre-launch benefit, which is a discount to the final launch price of 5%. What that means is any funds used to purchase a currency, this new value currency in any of the reserve currencies, whether that's Veris test or SD or ETH or Bitcoin uh, test tokens, will get a 5% discount to the final on-chain price that you or anyone else will need to buy it for from that point on subject of course to market conversion so it can go down and it can go up um so does all that make sense yep great and we talked about uh final supply of a hundred thousand now this is where we discuss what you're really doing that would justify any pre-allocation to archetype and, and here's where fact that you are literally taking a patent portfolio worth, again, I I, I, I don't want to actually say a number until you actually go public with all of that information, but we is it is it safe and, and fair for me to say we're talking about a large, medium to large number of millions, like large number of millions of dollars, is that reasonable? Yes, uh, it's uh, tens of millions of dollars in terms of current value. Okay. And so you're taking that licensing, exclusive worldwide, perpetual licensing of that 
entire portfolio, which covers multiple types of devices, as I understand it, and you're going to make it so that the only way to license that, that means for the, the devices that you've sent, if you were to make more and send those out, you would also need to do this, um, your company would, you're going to basically sell exclusive worldwide licensing rights to that patent portfolio to this currency such that in order to license patent so anyone can make these devices and you're I, I understand expecting to make them as well and in order to license that patent um someone has to burn that currency which benefits all holders of that currency and in exchange for that entire value of that of that licensing of that portfolio and putting that into the commons through this value currency that's what this pre-allocation and carve out is for correct absolutely i think we should uh, we will have the uh, full and final legal uh, wording around that whether it's a sale or a license, a perpetual license, because it has to be to an entity. Understood. But absolutely, Understood. that is uh, the ec the economics are exactly as uh, stated. And um, again, it's a first, uh, I think, for any uh, patent portfolio, and is a major evolution of the the state of the art. Okay. Yeah, super. I mean, super exciting from my perspective because I, you know, I'm not, I have a few patents myself. And as you know, I kind of started to get a little bit soured on the whole patent model. And I love what you're doing where you're actually taking this entire portfolio and rather than, you know, turning around and, and doing what, um, what, well, frankly, a lot of companies might decide to do, which just ends up being, uh, you know, more of a trollish move, you're really mutualizing this that everyone can both benefit from it and also um, being a good citizen in the whole thing as you do it and and you're going to turn around and, and license it the same way so that everyone benefits from the whole process as I understand it. Absolutely. And this doesn't, uh, it comes 24 hours after the congressional hearings on the um, surveillance capitalists who really monopolize the patent business and then make it such that inventors who do come up with great ideas are forced into relationships or are forced to sell their intellectual property to those who are uh, capital holders. And furthermore, there is an enabling uh, system of the venture capital community, which typically will not uh, um, prosecute patents against um, these larger companies because they don't want right. to prejudice their um, their future benefits. And, so I yeah. think this is a very uh, fair way of um, of enabling people to contribute patents to portfolios as well. Understood. So so in the long run, this is a model. This is the first in you know a range of possible use cases related to intellectual property. But it's something that really benefits the people as you do it. That's what I like about it. So. Right. So these pre allocations, um, we've got 25 uh, million of the pre allocation in this dry run would go to the, and I, and I understand this is not a description of exactly how it might work on the main net. This is just one, a model that um, we're using as this dry run. We believe that it makes sense, and you're going to work through all of the uh legal details as well as you know the information about how this really will work but great test for the technology to be able to do all of this so okay so the pre-allocation um to archetype your uh the company your ceo for uh that would be 25 million um which is 25 percent to the value foundation and as i understand it, this is a foundation that uh you would create with the purpose of leveraging this technology so effectively it's going to be holding all of these uh these value coins that can be and converted into um it can be converted into money you know that could be used for
purchasing hardware, but it could also be converted into by being burned into the uh, um, licenses that you might then uh, donate to public works projects or um, use in in ways that really benefit society and and kind of work on both the um, nonprofit charitable side with that and then um, still having a company that can work with corporations, help them to create their own currencies using your model and not just for IP, but for um, loyalty currencies and all of the other things that I, I don't want to, I want to give away all of the details because I know you're going to have a lot of um, information about that later, but basically the foundation for, um, for this to work. So value foundation is how you, um, you have a nonprofit part of this that really helps in addition to, to this being uh, owned by the commons, helps to actually secure a part of that, to make sure that it goes back to the public good. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The aim of the Value Foundation is, of course, to um, benefit uh, social um, credit, uh, social benefits and social equity and to bootstrap the network. And of course, by having the licenses, it enables the foundation to partner, as we anticipate, the ATU 1181, the unions, and uh, our COVID-19 uh, projects, which in, hopefully will be in partnership with uh, Ron Kim in Queens, and um, the uh, Inclusive Value Ledger, working with uh, Professor Bob Hockett um, from Cornell. So the aim will be to spread uh, value to uh, all members of society, and the foundation will be using uh, its currency to do that in hardware and in uh, donations. And the community, of course. Sounds great. And, and I we have uh, also uh, something that we've been discussing. You know, as you know, the Veris Coin project or the Veris project is in Veris Coin um, our community efforts. Uh, there was no ICO, no pre mine, and the foundation was um, started based on donations of early founders. And you've been really kind of in the community in a way that um, that effectively helps to you know other companies can do this but you really understood the model join and you've been um, really behaving as as much of a founder of everything as as many people you know including myself across the project and so I want to thank you for that and also the fact that even on this test we have the Veris Coin Foundation here for uh, some of the um, pre-allocation and uh, we want to thank you for supporting the platform effort that supports you and everyone else that would use the Veris network and platform um, for the new economy that we envision. So uh, appreciate that this is here Thanks for that. As you, as you know, uh, we're one of the founders of the gold standards in um, self-sovereign identity and the work that we're doing. Um, and we obviously believe that there is a golden rule uh, that you can try and adopt and that we would like to show leadership by, um, by leading, by giving the foundation 5% uh, such that everybody else would follow our lead. And, take that as the golden rule of the network. Of course, you don't have to do anything, but there's, we think that's the right way to behave because there's a huge amount of valuable work contributed and everyone should have, uh, be able to contribute to back to the core. Thank you for your leadership on that. So um, the, the next, the pre-launch carve out. Now this, these are funds that come out of the, um, of the pre-launch participants pre-conversion funds. So this 3% will be to cover basic operating um, things, I assume, or other kinds of, of costs. But basically, this these are funds that do not need to be converted from the value currency 
in order to be used in their original form of uh, Verus Test or USD or Bitcoin or ETH tokens. Um, so just to be clear on what that is as part of the example and the dry run. And then right now on testnet, we are, does anyone know, uh, let me see. Actually, I don't want to move away, but I know that this block, this start block, um, will cause this currency to activate and leave its pre-launch phase within about 24 hours. So what that means is as soon as I actually launch this currency, then everyone worldwide who loads up testnet will be able to see that currency and will be able to participate. And of course, if they don't have any Verus test or USD or Bitcoin or ETH tokens, they can come to the Discord, to the Verus Discord, to the PBAS mm -hmm. development channel and ask for those currencies and people will be happy to give them a basket and they can participate in this in this uh, pre-launch phase. They can get the 5% discount. Their wallets will um, be replete with the value that they purchased or that they converted to in the pre-launch phase when the currency launches, assuming that we meet the 5 million uh, USD. And so I just wanted to uh, kind of review all of this. We're actually ready to hit enter. And when I do, I, this is actually not going to immediately launch. What it's going to do is it's going to give us um, something that I will then launch. And this is not currency launches exactly in the GUI, but they're cool enough to just walk through and show what they're doing. We're ready to hit enter. All right. Now I'm going to actually enter that in. When I do uh, that, make the currency. And as messy as that was on the command line there, it looks all fine. It looks like the currency is made. And so now we'll hop over to the very Click on the test net, because that's where I want to find the currency. And once that is mined into the uh, blockchain, and it'll be available. Let's try this. Okay, got it. So I add the currency. Now, pre convert to it. So let's pre convert some dollars because know that it's going to have a um, need to have some dollars and we're going to send the dollars to value and we're going to send uh, that to say Mike I'll send it to Mike and I'll send thousand dollars which I have in the wallet Right now, it expects one thousand dollars. It's wrong on the price, but I'll send that. See what happens. So it tells me that for a thousand dollars. Right now, this is before other people participate, and it's because we have such low participation 
right now because we didn't meet our minimums. At the current pricing, if it would launch, I'd get over a million value coins. I'm going to pre-convert. So what happens is, as the now basically everyone in the world can go to the Veris desktop version 0 0.1. In, sorry, now everyone in the world can go to the Veris desktop version 0.7.1-4, load the Veris testnet, and for the next 24 hours. Participate and pre-convert into the value currency launch. Once it launches, people will still be able to buy it, of course, not with the pre-launch discount, and they will be able to sell it to any of the currencies that are in its reserves as well. It can be used both as um, something that you would purchase and hold, or you could use it to purchase um, either hold or just convert to another currency way. So that is what I wanted to show in terms of what we're actually able to do. And we have just actually launched that test currency now. So if anybody's running the uh, Paris test net, um, take a look and maybe buy some of that currency for block 22,000 when it launches on Veris test net. If we can get $5 million in, and of course, we expect to get other currencies as well. So um, again, out of solicitation, we're talking about test net coins, out of solicitation for investment. This is all a dry run of, uh, of a currency that eventually you expect to really launch on the various network. But right now, um, you can just participate in test of one possible configuration of that currency. Any comments or thoughts from anyone on the, any questions? Uh, Nick, do you want to say anything in, in conclusion that we might actually um, keep for posterity at all? Yep. Um, I, I just think it's an extremely um, important step that um, we've achieved. And I think that the community has done a tremendous job just looking at how simple and elegant the process is. This is, uh, you know, I, I have experience in this, uh, an, an equivalent market and, you know, we could never have imagined something as efficient as this. It's really, um, a milestone in decentralized finance. It's a milestone in self-sovereign identity. It's a milestone in friendly names, in revocability, recoverability. There's just so many incredible achievements that the community has made over what is a relatively short period of time. I have been in looking for this since 2007 when I first invested in uh, the original company and have fought uh, to get to this point where we could mutualize something of value and create a new reality for everybody who wants to change the game. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Nick. And uh, thank you. And, and for that, as well as um, the fact that you really have a plan to use your patent portfolio to mutualize it for the benefit of people. And, and I think really, as I look at your plan for the benefit of the entire crypto community as a way to move forward into this new world of decentralized finance. So really appreciate your vision as part of the community. So thanks. I really do believe that we are one. We always uh, hash to uh, we are one. And I think that crypto communities have to come together. And I think that what you can enable with and what you have enabled with the ability to um, stake what will be Bitcoin and stake Ether uh, to um, the Varus network will um, lead to great efficiencies and great unity amongst all of the projects.
All right. Well, thanks. Thank you. And uh, Rozo or uh, Englal or anyone else, anyone um, on this uh, call would like to ask any questions or make any comments or, you know, it's open. Unfortunately, my mic was not on at the time. And I was making the comment and asking Mike, was this an independent blockchain that was launched or is this a token that was launched on top of the Verus network? Well, well wait, wait, that was not a P, that was not a PBAS chain, but the PBAS chain will be actually exactly about as easy to launch. That was not a PBAS chain, but um, and also there was no code. Those were those were just uh, man line commands. They might, you know, they're not as friendly as the GUI, but it still wasn't code. One of the very impressive things I was noticing as I was reading through the material is that there is a bridge being built on Verus to Ethereum. So essentially you are building a token on Verus and Ethereum at the same time. Could you elaborate on that more, please? bridge that we're working on that's actually we're making good progress on that um that actually allows you when you create a currency on Verus, you will be able to send that currency to the ethereum blockchain after launch you know and have it pop out as a magic like i mean not really magic, obviously but it, but it basically just does all the work for you to turn that into an erc20 token that will just pop out on ethereum um and and similarly but not exactly the same you'll be able to define uh currencies that map to ethereum currencies so you'll be able to send back and forth when that is done you know we're we're uh working on as aggressive time scales as we can but we're not promising exact uh dates but um when that's done you'll be able to send from the ethereum blockchain ERC-20 tokens and Ethereum over to the Verus blockchain. You'll be able to use them in this way and you'll be able to launch or use currencies or define currencies on the Verus blockchain um, and send them over as well to the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, that's in progress and making good progress. We're hoping to get a version of that up on the Rinkby testnet that it would be both on uh, the ETH testnet and our testnet at the same time in the not too distant future um, so that we can actually play around with that stuff, which would be really cool. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the really exciting things about it is that you, there's not really a downside that, you know, to, to doing it this way because you can still use all the, you know, well, I, I want to say, I want to say older infrastructure. I, I don't want to. I don't want to insult anybody or, or you know, but, um, you can use all of that if that's vin, what you vin, choose to vin, use. Vintage, vintage infrastructure. Uh, vintage. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, you know, you can get all of the um, simultaneous solutions of of liquidity and you know, DeFi and scalability of PBAS chains and and uh, you know, easy Kickstarter-like minimums and launches and all of these things. And you don't have to give up uh, writing you know, Solidity apps if you really want to. Um, you have other options too, though, of course. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you can use Solidity programming in order to create smart contracts on Verus as well. What about other codes like C++? I mean... Yeah, I mean, so the thing is right now, um, you know, we're using smart transactions to build this technology. And basically defining the protocol and then creating the transaction, recognized transaction outputs um, to implement those protocols. And just as when, just as when we got started um you know and i talked to jail 777 at the beginning and and said so if we were to launch with a friendly fork of 
of Komodo, and we wanted to do all sorts of new technology. Um, you know, would we still be able to leverage Komodo notarization, some level of compatibility, you know, and, you know, things that we actually turn out we're going to, we're going to be leveraging some of the Komodo notarization technology as well um, in some of what we're doing. So, you know, we have our own auto notarization technology and we're going to be compatible with Komodo notarization technology as well. And, and what, what JL777 said at the time, which is very relevant to what you're asking, is you, know, you can start with something that's fully compatible, but you can, uh, you can diverge from what Komodo is or what the Komodo asset chains are to your heart's content as long as you just maintain the compatibility at the notarization level, these are fully independent. And when people start a PBAS chain, they will be able to make their own rules. I would argue that the people who um, are making these kinds of systems should actually be able to develop those systems in Rust or C++ not just solidity and the fact is that you end up with um application so today if you look at like uh brave and their use of bat you know i would argue that most in fact almost all of their actual application around all of what bat enables is not solidity code you know, they have solidity code that they use just to kind of interface with their model on the on the Ethereum blockchain. But their decentralized applications and all of what really makes their system work resembles um, in many ways kind of a hybrid between, you know, what people think of as solidity apps where the solidity part is very small, and then a lot of a system that actually has to deal with real world issues on a constant basis. So with Verus, at first, people will be able to either use the Verus capabilities on the Verus blockchain, or make their own PBAS chain in their own project, integrate with uh, solidity, or integrate with their own system that they define, and they can diverge radically as long as they remain common with the interchain and interoperability protocols it's not really that hard to do and so each project is really interoperable can be integrated can leverage all the capabilities that we're building in the core community and in the core various platform but they can diverge and create their own unique value as well and just stay compatible at the protocol level for merge mining, for cross-chain notarization, for sending transactions between different blockchains, and even for leveraging things like the ETH bridge, those will be available to other chains in the network as well. So I, I hope that answers your question on the application side. I see the application development model as, as you know, much broader than the model of start by writing a solidity contract because many D apps have the bulk of their really hard work outside of that. That's absolutely incredible. It really sounds like the possibilities are just endless. I mean, you're talking about developers and coders that can come from all different sectors of the tech world and be able to build on the technology or the coding that they've already know and be able to produce these platforms and applications and different things for the new finance world. Very incredible. I think you can make the comparison that this is to the blockchain what Stripe was to payments. Well, I, I, I no way, I, I actually, wait, I'm sorry. I. I don't think of this as a, a company or a, I don't think any company, I honestly, maybe it's just me, but I don't think there's not in, a company. Not in a company, not you, in a company sense, but in terms of the, the ease 
of use and the ease of implementation for developers. That's oh, I see. what yeah. Okay, yeah. Stripe was noted Thank for the fact that it got massive, massive dev adoption because it was simple and it's five lines of code. But in this, you, I mean, literally, I know you guys are calling these commands code. I know as a developer who works in actual C++ and, and you know, other Python or JavaScript or Rust or whatever it happens to be, that um, I, I might be a little jaded. But technically, these really aren't exactly code. And uh, these these functions will be in the GUI. And, and also, anyone can write GUIs for this. That's the beauty of it. This is a protocol. So, you know... There are so many applications that are actually already enabled. It's more a matter of people just need to find out how to do them. And and we've what, been focusing on making all of these possible. As soon as we get all of these things together and out on mainnet, we'll really start focusing on helping everyone understand how to leverage it as much as possible. What would you call that just out of interest, Mike, if, it, if you gave it a name? If it's not code, oh. it's a command. Oh, which? Oh, it's just, yeah, the command, that's just a, a cli command. Those are just a command line. Some people, some people, some crazy people like me and other Linux users, you know, use that as their wallet. Like they don't use the GUI. We don't use the GUI that much. They actually just use those commands as the way that we use the wallet. I, it might seem strange, but uh, it's, like a DOS, it's, like, it's like before the GUI in Windows, you know, and people use commands on the DOS command line. It's the command line. So sim simple, so refer it to a simple commands rather than simple code. Yeah, it isn't code, it's command. It's their exactly. command that's line. The, command. That's what you'll make, yeah. that's what you'll make. Come on. So something else that I've noticed that's very fascinating is when you're launching your token on the Veris network, you're actually launching a basket of currencies at the same time, which also gives you instant liquidity to the currencies in that basket. That's absolutely amazing because you don't have to worry about getting on exchanges or anything. Can you elaborate on that? Well, you know, as, as any crypto project ever that tried to start as a fair project or started you know, with really a focus on trying to create something new without without the ICO, you know, without a giant pre-mine or a giant dev fee, really just the, the original Bitcoin model or, or most projects, even when they start with pre-mines, if they didn't do an ICO and they're not flush with lots of funds for paying for liquidity and getting onto exchanges and things like that, um, it is a real challenge to get on to trustworthy exchanges. And, you know, and we really made the decision to, to fast track the liquidity side of the protocol was, was when we had a challenge with one of the centralized exchanges that we were listed on. And, and we just decided, you know, we are not going to depend on that anymore. And not only that, but, most projects, every project that starts needs liquidity in one way or another. And so how about instead of just having to start the project and then spend a whole bunch of energy on figuring out how to get listed in different places, you could start immediately with liquidity and you could start immediately with fungibility. And, you know, if you have a, a model that works for people, it's absolutely fair. It can be, you know, the same as a fair launch. There, there doesn't have to be anything that is a transaction where someone's actually, you know, selling value to the currency, as in the case, like as in the case of uh, of Archetype. Someone could launch a completely fair convertible chain that represented, you know, climate change that represented some some major thing in the world that someone wanted to change, and and if they donate a pre-allocation of that to to something that really matters then the more people who use that currency the more that value will go up but from day one the whole thing is liquid and fungible and no project that starts this way needs to worry and stress themselves about going to get you know listed as one of their primary things when a lot of times you know really truly innovative and idealistic projects want to spend their time 
on building what it is that's unique about them, not on finding liquidity. And so, and so, and so right. And so just natively, the currency is natively convertible on the blockchain between all of those currencies and itself. So it's, it's automatic. It's just like blockchain convertible to Barris test, to USD, to Bitcoin, and to Ethereum tokens, which with the decentralized bridge will be able to be sent back and forth between Ethereum and Verus, for example. That's absolutely incredible, especially for a new project that really needs liquidity that from instantaneously they will have liquidity to whatever they decide to use as a basket. Like and for this example, it's Ethereum, BTC, USD and Verus. I think that's a, a revolutionary breakthrough especially for these smaller projects or your mom and pop type outfits that can use blockchain technology and their outfits and i'll not mention the accessibility that it might be for college students or uh, even boy scouts girl scouts or other applications to just be able to launch their own blockchain with very simplicity and at the lowest cost and at the most scalable architecture yeah, I mean, that's and so, yes, you're absolutely right. And that's because that's what I believe we should always be doing is making things better for the people who come after us, you know. And so the um, the point that actually Nick just made is also important to mention is, yes, you can convert. You'll be able to convert this currency. You can already participate in the pre-launch for the next day um, test net. Uh, using any of these currencies and you can get those currencies by going to the discord and asking but once it launches and is live you know once it's live um, and after its start block you'll be able to convert it to and from all of these currencies and if a bunch of people convert to that currency using say the USD token or the Veris test token and a bunch of people convert from that currency to those same tokens everyone in the same block of transactions process that going in either direction get exactly the same price with no spread it's always the most fair price in all directions it is almost comical with how much there is and i and i don't i don't want to make a joke about it because it's all there but yes it's it actually literally one of the challenges is that you're literally enabling so much and and so and, and enough of it is just completely new or solving problems that hadn't been solved before that um, the challenge that people have is how to describe what this entire system is. And even when you get to the point of scalability, the, the whole system scales out like a fractal network of blockchains. This technology you've built is going to revolutionize the blockchain ecosystem. We really appreciate all the hard work. So, well, thanks for helping make all this happen. Everybody you know, who's been part of this is who's made this happen so you know i work on code and i'd be working on code and and this wouldn't have happened if we didn't have all the people in the community who we have so um, developers all the people who actually make these you know these recordings get the word out figure out how to actually uh, make the incredible videos you made the companies that that have the vision like archetype and and you know also happen to have um, large portfolio assets that can be mutualized with this technology I mean that everybody involved in this across the community and you know and I'm gonna miss so many people I mean like uh, I, I see people on this uh, call who have done so much to help contribute in writing articles or understanding things you know you got all bits and and crypto 278 who's helped out and you know dudes moby who's running the staking pool and i i i'm gonna i'm gonna stop because there's just like there's been so much work across the community to make this happen and although people might not always realize how important a role they play you know whether it's oink or someone else who obviously has a critical role in the community this is the sum. It's more than the sum of what everyone contributes. That's the truth. Thank you, Mike. This is absolutely incredible 
the vision that you've had along with everybody that has helped along with the community, all the other developers. I have watched this shape up over the last couple of years and it is absolutely amazing what you have shown us today in this demo. And I really look forward to the future. Thank you everybody for coming and checking out the demonstration that we've had. Make sure to join our Discord. We'll be doing more demos and more teaching classes. Um, and as you just saw on the screen, the <laughs> link didn't work for some reason. It was taking forever to load, but make sure to click that link on our website, veriscoin.io. And thanks again for participating. See you guys. All right. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Thanks, Rozo. Thanks, Nick, and Archetype and Value and, and everyone on the call. Thank you.